It, it seems to me the biggest mistake that interns could make with this assignment is to treat it like a course assignment. It, it, it puts a whole, it puts a wrong face on the whole thing. We, we chose this project because we think they need to learn. They, they are up against a problem of learning to teach more students over time. They're becoming aware of students they're not teaching as well as they're teaching other students. And we intend to support that. So the first sort of trap in this is to treat it like a school project instead of like a teacher's project. Which is an understandable trap given where we are. That it's an assignment with a due date, yep. with a whole lot of procedural directions. That an instructor's going to grade. Mm -hmm. And a rubric. And all the trappings yep. of an assignment. Yep. So what we can do is, I think, is just invite people to fight that. To keep remembering what it's for. Yep. They will struggle across their careers to teach more kids better. And this is that this is their project for now. And would you say I, you know, I would say this is something that good teachers work on all the time in this way. Um, yeah. Make case studies of students and then do some research about them and then try out things. To me, you know, th this models what good veteran teachers would do. They don't write about it. No. But they do drive home from school, drive to school, sit at their kitchen table planning, sit in their classrooms during a uh, planning period, worrying about particular kids and trying to figure out what's going on with those kids, trying to figure out how to teach them better. Yeah. That's basically the project we've set up. It seems it seems that as classroom teachers, the first people you notice are the ones who are, who stand out the most. They disrupt the most, they talk back the most, they are absent the most because they've been suspended. <laughs> they, and I thought it might be a useful way to look at this project, possibly to, to look at students that you don't notice as much and kind of make it a purposeful project to look at the student that you don't frequently pay as much attention to and see what's going on there and see what you can do with and for a, a particular student like that. So, uh, so it's a person who's there every day. <clears throat> I'll play the dummy. How do you do that? How do you notice these kids? I was just thinking about that. <laughs> you could go out of your way. Just, I'm thinking, um, kids are filing into the class, and they're starting to take their seats. And you could just scan, asking yourself what you can remember about them. The ones who stand out, you'll remember a lot. And then you'll probably get to a phase about which you can remember almost nothing. That'd be one way to do it, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. For me, it was always, which kids do I learn the names of first? And it's not necessarily because I enjoyed them the most. Sometimes it was the exact opposite. But the ones that I learned last were for, that was an indication to me that I had very little sense of where they were at as a kind of a complete learner in the classroom. So. You might look at their work. You might mm -hmm. look at the, look at the, the, the work that comes in. Look at their papers and Think about noticing students in different ways, you know, through through their work. Students who won't have hardly any marks at all on their paper. Possibly. They won't have attaboys, then then and they won't have you gotta fix things. Right. Stu work, yeah. work that's partially completed, not totally completed. Mm -hmm. Work that um, is hard to read. Work that um, seems to have patterns of of problems that you see, um, you know, maybe those kind of things. I was thinking patterns across assignments. So a student who does really well on tests and doesn't do so hot on other assignments, maybe I'm thinking in a science context, a student who blows the doors off of a lab and does great, and then come test time, just kind of you know doesn't get it and, and kind of falters. So the differences in terms of performance may also be an indication of folks and things. Right. Maybe the grade book. Kids with uh, low, to low averages so far, 
and you sort of can't remember doing anything with them. Right. Say, say you thought of two or three people like this. In a class, you know, maybe it's your focus class, maybe not. But students that you've taught for some time now. We've, we've already talked about one Travis moment. And that's kids that you don't have a snowball's head, chance in hell of teaching better. In extreme cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you... We don't intend this project to be the story of turning a kid's life around. And it, it won't be uh, functional if you choose some pattern of behavior that's so extreme. So some pattern of, of, uh, of, fit, of failure that is so long-standing that you don't really have any good chance of... I mean, that would... They shouldn't discourage themselves with this project, right? It's mm -hmm. tough enough without choosing more than you can do. So this, for, for my folks, is the what I shared with them last semester, the, the pragmatic filter of, you know, you're, you're looking at a situation, you know, if you're just racking your brain, and this is a struggle not only for you, but for your mentor and for other teachers, and this is just a, a puzzle. And that might be a sign that this is not a, a yeah. cookie that you're able to bite off. And boy, did I mix reading. metaphors there? I think I did. <laughs> yes. It's probably too much. And you'll probably discourage yourself by trying to. Yeah. Now, another thing we ought to mention here is the, the case does not require you to succeed. Uh, very important right. trap. The case does not require you to turn a kid's life around or even make it better. It's, it's about learning to teach kids. And, and you, could, you could learn a lot from a failure. So we're not, we're not interested in fiction right? yeah. about how things got better. We're not going to put that kind of pressure on people. We want them to understand that you could learn a lot yeah. from a case in which you don't, in which you do get, you know, achieve something, and from a case in which you don't. One of the traps that I see if you choose a student who is, you know, so, um, so difficult for the reasons that we've described is that in a way it allows you out. It allows you to make some pretty major generalizations and kind of opt out of it. It's, it, it's out of your hands. It's, um, the, the problems are out of your control and therefore there's little that can be done. Yeah. And so there's sort of this trap that dead ends you as well, or potentially, I think. Mm -hmm. That's right. This is tied up with the moral problem because you'd like to be able to turn the kid's life around, right? You think that's what you went there to do, um, yeah. but it's going to take years to develop the set of habits right, that would let you get at the really hard ones. Um, it's it's going to be fairly then, it's going to be fairly taxing, right? And mm -hmm. even then, you have one year yeah. in a person's life, mm -hmm. and there are lots of other influences yeah. that impact it. The way I would sum this up is is think this through just a little ways and try to choose kids about whom you will have hypotheses that are at least remotely within your control, yeah. that you can do something about. Don't, don't reach too far, because that'll just be a sure loser. Reach away, so mm -hmm. planning in the long term to reach further and further over time. Yeah. And again, not loser as in you won't succeed, but loser as in you may not have any traction right. to begin. Exactly. Uh, to, to try something, to do something. There are long shots, probably because of history. We've probably done enough on that, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I think so. Purpose and kids. Mm -hmm.